Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about constant run MPC with uh, fairness and guarantee of output delivery. I'm Feng Haoliu from F Florida Atlantic University, and uh, this is uh, my co-authors are Do from George Mason and Elaine from Cornell. And this work was done while all of us were affiliated with the University of Maryland or partially affiliated. And then afterwards, uh, we, we all moved. But we thank uh, UMD for a generous support. <laughs> OK. So basically, multi-party computation allows different parties to jointly compute on their private input without revealing them. And there are several basic properties like correctness and the privacy, which we are all familiar with. And additionally, there are some properties about output de delivery, such as fairness and guarantee of output delivery and security with a board, which capture uh, different levels of security we want. And uh, intuitively, fairness means uh, the adversary can learn the output only if the honest parties do. So if he learns the output, that implies uh, the honest parties learn the output. And guarantee of output delivery is st stronger in the sense that the adversary cannot prevent the honest parties from learning the output. So no, no matter what he does, um, the honest parties receive uh, the output. And security with a board is a relaxed notion where it's possible that the, the adversary learns the output, but the honest parties do not. So in this work, we ask, what's the run complexity? So run complexity is a very simple measure of efficiency of a protocol. So uh, there are many, many uh, models of like uh, to count how many runs. And in th this work, we count how many broadcasts does each party need, assuming there is a simultaneous broadcast channel. So uh, everyone can broadcast something, and then we count this as round one. And then everyone uh, broadcasts another, and this is round two. And we assume like you either send something or you abort. So this is very pretty simple. So there is no like uh, uh, scheduling or whatever. So to, to just make the question like simple, OK. Uh, previously, so what do we know about round complexity? So for security with a board, uh, we know uh, this like quite well. So for any threshold, uh, AJW and LTV previously showed uh, there is a three-round protocol uh, based on LWE, and uh, Garg et al. showed like uh, there we can reduce one round uh, assuming I.O. and very, very uh, recently, uh, Predier and Daniel showed uh, how to uh, design a two-round protocol uh, based on LWE, and this is concurrent to this work. But for fairness and guarantee of output delivery, so things are a little bit uh, uh, tricky and were, uh, was rather uh, less studied. So previously, uh, Cleve showed it is impossible if there is no honest majority. And BGW showed uh, uh, fairness and guarantee of output delivery. Uh, both are achievable regardless of runs. And AJW LTV showed uh, their protocol can be extended to five runs, um, achieving guarantee of output delivery. So one interesting question was, uh, can we further reduce the run, uh, say, using the uh, Garg et al., their compiler? And in their paper, they, show, they said yes in one sentence. So this motivated us to study, like, uh, to delve into the question of how. And in fact, uh, uh, Gennaro Ishai, Kushlevitz, and Robin showed it's impossible for two runs. Uh, uh, protocol against Russian fail-stop adversary or malicious adversary. But before, uh, when we wrote this paper, we were not aware of this work. 
So anyway, so we showed uh, another way to prove impossibility results saying to run is impossible even against failed stop adversaries in the CRS model. So failed stop adversaries is very similar to uh, the uh, semi-honest uh, adversary, so who basically follows the, the prescribed strategy, but he can, uh, except he can uh, just abort. So uh, the only thing, a malicious thing he can do is to abort. So our impossibility result is slightly, uh, the, the proof is completely different and uh, the quality is slightly different and I, I won't discuss here, but like I will show you a little bit how. Okay, and for feasibility result, we construct a three-run uh, protocol for general functionalities in the CRS model. So first we work uh, on uh, the fail stop model and then we can up, upgrade the protocol to the malicious model. And additionally, uh, we showed the compiler of GARC Gar at all uh, only requires witness encryption for general MP statement, which is a weaker assumption than uh, I.O. for general circuits. In this talk, I will focus on the impossibility result and the uh, feasibility result. So uh, our impossibility result uh, for two-run protocol is based on the impossibility result of VBB obfuscation. So basically we show, suppose there exists a two-run fair protocol, and then there exists a VBB obfuscator for general circuits, which was shown impossible by Bar Barack et al. So let's take a look at some intuition about like this proof. So suppose the first party doesn't send the second message here. So suppose he holds this message, and here he already, by the correctness of the protocol, he learned the output. So by fairness, the other parties should learn the output because the, the adversary, like uh, the first party who di didn't send the output already learned the output. So this is by fairness. And this implies the second message of Sheldon, Sheldon is this the first party, uh, is redundant. So we will use this fact to show uh, the impossibility, to construct a VBB obfuscation as follows. So consider a functionality F on input C, X, and Z, output C of X, where C is a circuit. So the obfuscator just simulates the first uh, party's message. So this, I claim, this is an obfuscation of C. And security here uh, is easy because by the multi-party, the protocol's security. So uh, intuitively, all the other parties should not learn about uh, the input C. But the tricky part here is how to evaluate the circuit because if you encrypt something, uh, yeah, usually, typically, we don't claim this as an, an obfuscator because you cannot evaluate it. So here, you, uh, you are given the first message, so how do we evaluate this circuit? So the evaluation uh, takes input X, he can just simulate the other two parties, uh, where the second party holding the input X. So why can he, uh, the evaluator learns the output? This is because uh, the protocol is fair. So by the previous argument saying like Sheldon's second message is redundant. So if, uh, if you are given all the transcript here, you can derive the output. So this is why, uh, the, how the evaluator works. So, so by this argument, we can formulate, formalize this argument like, uh, and prove that uh, this is in, indeed a VBB obfuscator. So, so we showed a uh, two-round protocol is impossible. Okay, so two-round is impossible, so the next question is whether we can construct a three-round protocol, which is like, uh, yeah, pretty natural. So um, we observe that uh, fair, if you want to construct a three-round fair protocol, it's fairly simple, because you can convert any T-round protocol 
uh, from security with a board to fair MPC in the honest majority setting. So the idea is very simple. So let f, little f, be the function that we want to compute, and let the big F be the functionality that outputs a secret share of the output. So in the first T rounds, you run the uh, uh, security with abort protocol. And in the last round, you just broadcast uh, the, the shares. So if the attacker attacks the uh, first T rounds, and he learns nothing, and the party just abort. And if he attacks the last round, and that's too late because uh, honest majority can already recover the message, the, the output. So this like, uh, so as a corollary, uh, we show that three round fair protocol is possible. Uh, so if you use the IO uh, protocol from GARC at all, and then uh, you get a three round fair MPC based on IO, and similarly you can con construct from LWE. So the next question is, how about guarantee of output delivery, which is, is a stronger property than fair, fairness? So previously, uh, Cohen and Lindo showed uh, fairness implies guarantee of output delivery regardless of runs. So the idea is basically you just uh, run the protocol and you kick out uh, the aborting parties because, and gradually, and then you will like, uh, uh, eventually you will receive the output. And, but as I said, this uh, increases the round complexity. So can we get uh, round optimal solutions? So before, doing, be, before presenting our construction, uh, I want to like, take a look at uh, a previous approach by AJWLTV so in the security with a board, because I will use this structure as my protocol. So basically, uh, their approach is in the first round, they do a, like a, they, they use a distributed version of fully homomorphic encryption. So in the first round, they generate a common a public key, which is, can be viewed as a secret, additively, a secret share of their PK1, PK2, and PK3. And PK is a fully homomorphic uh, key. And in the second round, they just encrypt. And in the third round, uh, they evaluate and then do a threshold decryption. Okay, so to make the uh, scheme guarantee of output delivery, they also do a secret sharing. Uh, they secret share everything in the first round. And if the attacker uh, aborts at some point and everyone, uh, the honest party reconstructs uh, his message and then resumes. So this requires uh, two extra rounds in the worst case because there are two places that uh, the honest parties might need to uh, reconstruct. And this seems inherent because everything is with respect to the common PK, and which is, as I said, is additively shared among all parties. So in order to uh, proceed to the end, you kind of need uh, the information from all parties. So if someone aborts, you need to reconstruct him. So our intuition is to avoid this um, uh, Kangman PK in the first place because people have already committed to the Kangman PK too early. So this is like uh, why their uh, scheme needs uh, two extra rounds. So we take another approach so we define a new threshold, uh, fully homomorphic uh, encryption. And in particular, the, our scheme has flexible ciphertext in the following sense. A party can in generate a flexible ciphertext, I call C-flex, with respect to all the PKs. And later on, anyone can transform a flexible ciphertext into a homomorphic ciphertext with respect to a set T. So this set T is a subset of N. So, and this C homomorphic is with respect to uh, PK sub T, so which says like all the public key in this set T. 
And then C homomorphic is just a, a FHE ciphertext, and it can be computed homomorphically. And also, we need a, to design an N, a half N out of N threshold decryption, where a majority uh, can decrypt in one round. Previously, uh, it's N minus one, sorry, N out of N threshold decryption. So we need to modify like the decryption process a little bit. Okay, so with this, New, uh, our new threshold FHE, what can we do? So instead, uh, to establish a Kanban PK, we just ignore the Kanban PK because that was like established too early. And then uh, parties encrypt flexible ciphertext. So those ciphertexts are not committed to a particular PK yet. So in the third round, people uh, parties should uh, transform first with respect to the set of non-aborting parties, and then evaluate and then do a threshold decryption. So let's see what if the attacker attacks. So if the attacker aborts in the second round, then he is simply kicked out because his ciphertext is useless, and the other the other parties can just transform the ciphertext with respect to the uh, non-aborting set. And if the attacker aborts in the last round, that's already too late because uh, we have an, an, an uh, half n out of uh, n threshold decryption. So, uh, so the, if he aborts there, and that will be too late. Okay, so now, we are going to present our new threshold FHE. Basically, this is a variant of uh, a, the brilliant scheme of uh, GSW by Gentry, uh, Sahai, and Waters. Um, so our uh, CRS common reference string is basically a random matrix. And uh, each party outputs a PKI uh, sub I as uh, L, an LWE sample. So basically, it's SIA plus some noise EI. And we define the matrix BI as this A concatenated with uh, this VI. So to encrypt, we just output an, a GSW ciphertext. So this is for, for party I. So it's BI times a small matrix R and plus XI uh, times G. So we think of XI as a bit, but like, uh, yeah, you can. Uh, it can be generalized. Yeah, so this is just GSW. And additionally, we output some uh, helper. Uh, so additional information, uh, this VJ for J not equal to I, and VJ equals BJ times R. BJ is like uh, uh, the public key of party J. So to transform, um, it's also very easy. So basically, given the uh, GSW ciphertext, and we do a subset sum of the helper. So, and this T, you, we just think of this T as the non-aborting parties. And just by unfolding the equation, and uh, we get this, and then uh, very, very luckily we find it like uh, the re it results in a, another GSW ciphertext. So, uh, because it, it is of the GSW ciphertext, the form of GSW ciphertext, uh, it can be homomorphically uh, evaluated. Okay, so, uh, so the last bit is to design a threshold decryption. So uh, now I'm only presenting the intuition, and so the intuition is basically the decryption is just computing inner product of the ciphertext and the summation of SKJ, where J in T. So we can just use uh, uh, a similar technique, the traditional BGW technique, and we just secret share this, these X, uh, secret keys using uh, the Shamir secret share, and we can easily design a, a like computing inner product without uh, interaction. So 
Uh, one additional thing I want to mention is uh, we need to deal with the noise very, very carefully because uh, this is very similar to the previous work, AJWLTV. Uh, yeah, so in order to prove security, if you want to try, like you need to play with the noise carefully. Okay, so yeah, this concludes my talk. <laughs>